I'm Bethany Shepherd, and I'm a Deep Space Network Mission Operations Engineer here at Goonhilly. I did my degree in physics, it was a bachelor's degree. I got a job here uh, as, a, as an operator for Goonhilly 6, which is our biggest satellite dish and is the only commercial deep space satellite dish in the world. And we support spacecraft that can be orbiting Earth, the Moon or beyond. Now I'll show you where we operate the dish from and how operations works. This is our mission control room and this is where the, we operate the dish from. Pretty much all operations take place in this room. Uh, we can look at devices on and in the dish. We control them from here, we run our programs from here uh, to configure all the equipment uh, before sending a signal and or receiving signals from spacecraft. On the left shows Earth stations in the S-Track network. As you'd expect, when spacecraft go below the horizon, we can't track it, we can't send a signal to it or receive from it. So that's when other Earth stations in a different part of the world will take over. Uh, on our center screen here, uh, it's just a map with satellites and their trajectory over the Earth so that we can see where a particular spacecraft is gonna be if we need to. On our third screen here, it just shows the status of our antenna Gunhili 6 so that we can easily just see what position it's in, what it's tracking, and other information that might be helpful that we can just glance at. In the space industry, we all use UTC because we all need to use at the same time. So we have our ops clock here that's in UTC and also has our events scheduled into it so that we can keep an eye on it. So at these workstations, we have various programs and software uh, where we can control the instruments in the dish directly from. The way that we communicate with spacecraft is we create our signal, we send it out of our dish at very high amplitudes so it can reach the spacecraft. The signal that we send will carry the information that our customer wants to send to the spacecraft. And then in reverse, we also receive the signal in our dish uh, from the spacecraft and we send it back to the customer after processing it. In this room, we have everything that we need to control the satellite dish and all of the instruments within it. We also have our communications links here directly to the customers so that we know what they want us to do. Next, we'll go to the dish and look at the things we need to check every day to make sure that the dish is running correctly. So we're going to start by looking at the ACU, this is our antenna control unit. Um, we just check that uh, it doesn't have any obvious errors. It doesn't at the moment, so that's all fine. Uh, so tick the boxes and move on. Now we look, up, look at these crack units. They are our air conditioning units. Um, Again, we just check that everything is nominal um, and that there are no errors. I can see here that everything is nominal, so that's fine, we can move on. And just the leak detection system, just check that there aren't any leaks because that would be quite important. We don't want any water ingress or anything. Uh, the next thing is to check waveguide pressure. We don't want it to have water in it because like a microwave, it will decrease the intensity of the signal. So we make sure that it's dry and that the pressure is right. And I can see that the pressure from here is fine. So take that off and move on. These are the HPAs um, and these are the ones for X-band. We have two bands we can use in this antenna, X-band and S-band. Um, these are the X-band HPAs. They are what amplify the signal so that it can be transmitted into space. You can say they're the lungs of the antenna. Just checking that it hasn't been worn out too much. And these are the HPAs for S-band and they look fine as well. UPS, so UPS is uninterrupted power supply. Uh, they will take over if you have a power cut in the interim uh, between losing power and the generator on site coming on. 
These are other GPSs as well. We have different types. And we always have two of everything for redundancy. My favourite part of the job is when we see our return signal come back and we know that we've sent something to a spacecraft out in deep space and we can see that we've got it back. I think the most important part of SATCOMs is being able to keep the world connected with each other and keeping the world connected with outer space because it's the epitome of exploration and the only way to explore outer space is by using satellite communications. With the technology we have now, we're learning so much and there's still so much more to learn about outer space.